Today we're here to show you the uh, Monitor True Cap Capacitance Probe. Now, Capacitance Probes in general have had a bad reputation uh, for a number of reasons, mostly because they go out of calibration and that results in an overfill condition or an underfill condition on you. And the question always has to be asked, why are we having this problem? Either you have no material present or material present, so once you calibrate it, why would you ever have to recalibrate it? But there's many controls out there that have to use a, a magnetic key, a push, bot, a push button, um, an individual key, a remote display to reset your unit. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but a capacitance probe in general is going to have a probe that comes out, it's, it's completely solid state, and what happens, the control is going to send a sine wave basically out through the end of this probe, and what's going to happen that signal tries to ground itself back to the bin. As long as it continues to ground itself back to the bin and the control, we know there's no material present. When material is present, the signal does not make its way back to the bin, and that's when we know there's material present. As you can see here, this unit comes standard with a one quarter inch coupling. It has a three quarter inch coupling as an option. Here's, what, here's your dead zone in this area, so if you're on the side of a bin, you have material buildup, you're not gonna get any signal from here. It's only when we touch the probe are we gonna get ourselves a signal. So, in general, the reason why we have miscalibration problems and issues is that most units are actually made of Wheatstone bridge technology. Internally, with the Wheatstone bridge technology, it looks like this, it's used in load cells. This, this leg and this leg have to be in balance, and this leg and this leg have to be in balance. The problem is, you have, you have a probe that is made out of a stainless steel um, completely stainless steel, but you have the Wheatstone bridge made out of an alloy, so then you get more than a 30 degree temperature change, you'll lose calibration. Another time is, is RF interference, with other, other radio frequencies can absolutely reset these units. Now, with the, with the monitor unit, we don't have that issue. We can go from minus 40 to plus 185 degrees Fahrenheit without ever losing calibration. It's microprocessor based. Um, it's a fantastic unit in that regard. So, in general, when we look at, at calibrating the units, this is the simplest unit to calibrate on the market. Most of the time when you put someone's unit in, we know we stick the unit in the bin, and especially if it's a top mount like this, we'd stick it in, we calibrate it, basically to air. Then they say we need to, we need to put material on it to calibrate it to material. So at that point, a lot of times you're taking this unit out of, the, out of service, trying to put it into a bucket to calibrate it and put it back in. With our unit, basically, screw off cover, get the close up of this, this should be good. There's four levels of calibration or push button. We're going to choose which level. Right now it's set at sensitivity level one. I don't have to touch this probe right now to change the state. You can see that. Okay. I can put our, our sample of Play-Doh on here. It's going to stay red. It's going to show that I have material present right here. If I remove it, it's going to go back to that state. Okay. So when we calibrate, we choose one, one of four sensitivity levels, so I'm going to change to sensitivity level four right now. I do that, and all I have to do is make sure the material is, is eight inches or more below the probe, and we're going to push calibrate. Now within five seconds, the unit's calibrated. Okay? You're good to go. You don't have to add material to the unit and so on. Now with this unit, for example, one of the problems you get a lot of times is material buildup. So here we're showing material buildup. You can see the, the light is green. I can again come over here and I can stop that signal from going out. But as the sine wave is going out, what's happening right now, we're electronically boosting the signal away from the probes. That sine wave comes out here. It's boosting out around this. So you can ignore a big buildup as we're seeing right now. And when you get to a certain level, you won't be able to ignore it, right? You have to be clean. But in general, you can, you can uh, ignore a lot of the buildup you'd see on that. Another feature of this unit is there's a time delay in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this little light, but if I go in here and touch the probe like I'm doing like this, let's say this is at the end of a bucket elevator or another device, the material's not constantly there. I've got a time delay set for like six seconds. So when I hold this constantly for X seconds, from zero to 15, it will give you a signal. All right, but, and there's a time delay off as well as on, but if I just sit in, you touch the probe, it won't affect that. So you can use this in altitudes, for example, as well. Fail self, fail safe high, fail safe low, two normally open, normally closed contacts. Uh, fantastic deal. If you're interested in this, we give free trials. 
um, in your plant, and you won't be disappointed. If you're interested, please call us, 704-846-3737. Thank you so much.